the night when the cool fall weather had arrived, it didn't put a damper on the offense from either side. The ball was flying off the bats and into the seats at a rapid pace. The Nationals, holding on for their playoff lives, slipped through in the 11th and grabbed the series opener. to wear the jersey of the best player of the National League, and he is the best player of the National League, and you bring it to enemy territory, you're going to get that kind of reaction. Tonight it's game two, the Phils and the Washington Nationals from Citizens Bank Park. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Matt Stairs. Bryce Harper is indeed the best player in the National League. He showed it last night with a home run. It's the first time he's ever hit a home run against somebody younger than himself and Aaron <laughs> Nola. Well, tonight the Nationals will give the baseball to Steven Strasburg after last night's extra inning victory. Strasburg had a very disappointing start to the year, but he's been finishing strong. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. You have the best hitter in baseball. You should have the best pitcher in baseball. Steven Strasburg is very good. But you can see the first 10 games, 3-5 and five, with a brutal 6.55 ERA. He went on the DL. He came back strong, throwing the ball very well, mixing his pitches in 2-0 with a 115. Oh, back on the DL again. Came off again, very good again, 3-2, 2.89. You know, besides the 10 starts at the start of the year where he was brutal, he's been very good. This game here against the New York Mets, his curveball was unhittable. He throws two different curveballs. He gets on top of one curveball. We call that the snapdrag. You know, that's the one he wants to get over for a strikeout. The one also when he drops his arm down, it's more of a slurve. He has a lot of guys looking at the back door curveball. But when he is throwing that curveball for strikes, it's almost unhittable. Well, and the curveball has replaced single-handedly his slider. He used to throw both, but now it's just the curve. And you see all the positive numbers. The strikeouts per nine are up over two. The two-strike curveball usage is up nearly 9%. That has enabled him to be effective when he's got two strikes. He already was effective with a great change up in a fastball, but to add that curveball has made him even better. So he'll be on the mound tonight and opposed by David Buchanan in game two of this three-game series. So we'll get set for another comfortable night weather-wise here in Philadelphia. Can David Buchanan gain confidence and put together a solid 12th start of the season? We shall find out in just a few moments. Last night, the ball was a flying here at Citizens Bank Park. We had home runs left and right. Jason Worth even had two. Cody Ashies went the farthest of anybody. Lineups at first pitch when we return.
the mound. He's trying to get his uh, season in the right direction as we get down toward the end. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Nationals, brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Phils. Rendon, Escobar, and Harper, followed by Jason Worth, Clint Robinson, and Ian Desmond. In the bottom third of Wilson Ramos, Michael Taylor, and Strasburg will face David Buchanan, who comes in with a 2-8 and eight record, an earn run average of 9.11. Matt, I, I know the overall numbers don't look great. What really stands out, and you and I were talking about this today, look at the opponent's batting average, both left-handed and right-handed. There's yeah. no diversity there. Yeah, there's not, and it's, it hasn't been very good for David Buchanan this year. Uh, a lot of pitches down the middle of the plate. And you can see the Budweiser scouting report, fastball cutter curve and a change. You see he's averaging 89.3 on his fastball, and he's struggled versus the Nats so far in his career with an 8-1-8 ERA. Yeah, last time he faced him earlier this season, he went five innings, allowed six hits and three earned runs. So he'll face Rendon, Escobar, and Bryce Harper to begin tonight's ball game. Rendon had four hits last night. He has seven hits in the last two ball games. First pitch of the night is taken low. We're underway, and the count is one ball and no strikes. Overall, Rendon hitting 287. Five home runs, 21 runs batted in. He has spent a significant amount of the season on the disabled list. Breaking ball and it's two balls one strike. Early on the Nationals didn't really miss him because you know Escobar was filling in so well and Espinosa was doing a nice job. Aaron Ruff runs out of room. It's two and two. Aaron could not see it. It's that time of night. I guess. He's like, okay, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we realized where it was, out of play. He's got a little kid in him. You know, every kid, I don't know, with his hands <laughs> up like that. Two balls, two strikes. Chopper back toward the middle. Galvis takes the big hop. And one away. That time of day for the Nissan keys to the game and key number one tonight. Buchanan needs to figure it out. Mechanics, mental side of the game, put them all together. Number two, hit to your strength versus Strasburg. And other, you know, in other words, sit on your pitch until you get two strikes. Then you make the adjustment because you cannot hit his fastball, his curveball, and his changeup if you're thinking of trying to swing at every single pitch. So sit on your pitch, and that's your strength. And now you're saying that whoever it could be a different pitch for every player. Absolutely. If you're a good off-speed hitter, you sit on off-speed. You know you're going to see a curveball. If you think you can hit his curveball better, you sit on it until two strikes. Pick a pitch. I would want to, you know, Escobar. Escobar lifts it in the air to shallow right center field. And Bogusevic says he has it. Seven pitches, two outs. That's a good start for David Buchanan. And now he's got Bryce Harper to deal with. Operating 333, tops in the National League, 37 home runs, and 86 runs batted in. Well, he hasn't taken his foot off the pedal, 361 with six home runs. And that one goes right past him, and it's one ball and no strikes. Last night, don't forget, Odubel Herrera was hit by a pitch when Jordan Zimmerman was noticeably around the plate the entire night. Odubel today said he's got a little inflammation. Just off the inside corner, 2 0. Pretty good pitch right there. It was a good pitch. It's a young umpire behind the plate, Todd Tishner. He might be thinking about a lot of other things. 
in the air to center field. That one is gone. Right into that little platform in center field, and the Nationals take a one nothing lead. Home run number 38, and he absolutely crushed it. That he did. First, first pitch thrown behind him with a cutter. And then all of a sudden he gets an off speed pitch up in the zone. Bryce says, You throw at me, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch this for a while. There's Jason Worth. Jason seemingly having a conversation as he digs into the box. And that one goes right off the glove of Ruiz. He wanted it inside. Well, Harper's put together a fantastic year. Last night, as we mentioned, was the first time in his career that he hit a home run against somebody younger than him. I mean, he's still a young kid, obviously. Aaron Nola, just 22 years old. Well, that says a lot for Aaron Nola. Being, in the, being in the big leagues at a young age. Yeah, Never thought of that, did you? To put a positive spin <laughs> on it. <laughs> a pie, two balls, and no strikes. <laughs> Good off speed pitch. It's two and one. Two and two. <laughs> Chopper foul past the third base coach's box. Worth last night hit two home runs, a grand slam, and a solo shot. He had five RBIs in the ball game. He's been the typical Jason Worth. Now his numbers are down. I mean, obviously, 229 batting average is not what he's normally used to. But from a hit standpoint, he has spread his hits out: left field, center field, right field, all year long. Fly ball down the right field line. Bogusevic on the run into foul territory and runs out of room. You know, I had a chat with Jason yesterday. I would ref I refuse to go down and talk to him today. He hit two home runs yesterday, so I was not going to go and say how long. You're not going to help his luck. No, and he said yesterday that when he first came off the DL, he came back too soon. But I believe it was when they were playing against the, the Mets. They wanted to get a few guys back to get some thunder back in the lineup, and he says he wasn't ready. He says he's feeling better now. When he goes after a breaking ball, he strikes out, and the side is retired. But the Nationals take the lead on a home run by Bryce Harper to center field. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Nats one. Phillies coming up.
National League MVP this year. He just gave the Nationals a 1-0 lead. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Phillies. Sweeney, Galvis, and Herrera followed by Blanco, Ashy, and Ruff. Bogus Sebek in right field bats seven. Carlos Ruiz, eight. And batting ninth and pitching is David Buchanan. They'll face right-hander Steven Strasburg. Strasburg, eight and seven. ERA over four at four and a half to start. But he is averaging more than a strikeout per inning pitched. He is getting stronger as well. He's been working on a lot of mechanics, uh, trying to line himself up and having that downhill tilt throwing the baseball. As you look at the Budweiser scouting report, four pitch pitcher, average velocity 95.3. Ligging is hitting a buck 80 versus his change and a buck 93 versus his curveball. He's been very good record versus the Phillies with a six and two, the two four eight ERA. Yeah, this year we mentioned they did. He did. The Phillies did get to him one game. He wound up losing that ball game. First pitch is over for a strike to Darnell Sweeney playing left field tonight. Sweeney was one for four last night with a run scored in an RBI. 0 and 2. Talked to Darnell about that play at second base where he scooped it with his glove and tried to flip it. He said, in hindsight, after seeing the video, he should have gloved it. And then flipped it with his hand. He said, honestly, I thought the guy that was running was Escobar at the time. I thought he was faster. He said, I looked up and he wasn't even close to the, to the bag. Breaking ball and Sweeney strikes out. One got here in the first. And Freddie Galvis is due up. Well, this is the pitch we talked about in the open. That's the Snapdragon, the overhand curveball. That's the one he gets a lot of hitters. On strikeouts with. Why would he stop throwing his slider and just concentrate on the, the two curveballs? I think it's just more mechanics. Yeah. I think he was getting out of rhythm with his slider. Uh, they said when he was throwing his slider, changing his angle, changing where he was landing with his foot. They said when he was throwing sliders, he was opening up a little too early mechanically, and, and his left foot was going more towards first base. So now they got him right back on top of. Throwing that curveball and going straight down towards the pitchers or the hitters, excuse me. Two balls and no strikes to Galvis. Galvis, 268 with seven home runs. Not too shabby against the Nationals this year, 283 average. The lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Christian Rivera of Mount Laurel. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, then Christian will win $100. Galvis walks on four pitches, and the Phils have a base runner here in the bottom of the first. And it'll bring Odubel Herrera to the plate. Since he came off the disabled list, Strasburg's numbers have been good. Three and two with a 3.8. 8 ERA. The opposition, though, hitting just 193 against him. But those first 10 starts yeah. before he went on, not good. Brutal. Yeah, I think everybody thought there was something wrong with him. Well, maybe it's a you know three and five, but high six ERA. And the high opponent's batting average. That's the part where you thought was brutal. Yes. And I think sometimes it's just it might, it might be a wake-up call a little bit. He went on the DL. Maybe he was a little fatigued. Came back, found his mechanics, and has not been brutal. No, he's been pitching really well. Five straight out of the strike zone. One and zero to Odubel. Duble was showing me where he was hit by the pitch last night. Uh, he said he's fine. He's uh, he asked uh, Andres Blanco. He was standing next to him how to say the word uh, he was looking for. It was inflammation. Because <laughs> he said it in Spanish, uh, but he was trying to figure out how to say it in English. And so Andres told him, and he repeated it. It was not lost as we mentioned on the Phillies that Jordan Zimmerman's strike zone was so good last night until he hit Odubel in that at bat. Here it is right here. 
Yeah, it's not even close. Zimmerman never missed that bad. Probably in two years on hitting his target. I thought maybe because he called time a few times, but Wilson Ramos, the one that called time, was probably from something that happened earlier this year in Washington. Get a runner on his tempo. Just Slows stops. Down. Down and away, two and two. He may not have that big of a lead, to be honest with you. But he is in his head. Galvis has nine stolen bases this year. Wilson Ramos is a good catch and throw catcher behind the plate. Very good. And Odubel is struck out indecisive on that swing or that selection. Second strikeout for Strasburg. Andres Blanco's coming up. Murph, uh, Blanco's not your prototypical cleanup hitter, but the Phils uh, have a couple of down players uh, for tonight's ball game. You're right about that, and uh, so let's get you caught up on some of the injuries that have happened in and around the Phils lineup last night. You remember Ryan Howard, who would most likely be in this spot, Tom, uh, took that ball off the knee last night. It was a low throw from Freddie Galvis at one hop and hit him in the knee. Well, he, he left the game, or he left the ballpark last night on crutches, and then by the time he got home and, and kind of got, uh, was starting to relax a little bit, it got really swollen to the point where he needed to go to the ER and have that drained. So they're trying to keep him off of it right now. He is listed as day-to-day, -day, but we probably won't see Ryan Howard for a few days. Also, Aaron Altair took that ball in the 10th inning in the forearm, a hit-by-pitch, and uh, he is also listed as day-to-day. -day. Very sore and uh, a little stiff, said Pete McCannon. No structural damage, so that's the good news, but it'll be a day or two before we see Aaron Altair out on the field as well. Yeah, Pete said if he, if he needs it, you see Howard's injury here. The one hop that skips off the grass. This is where Altair was hit. He said if he needs Altair to pinch run, he can pinch run. <laughs> that's amazing, though, about Ryan Howard. Murph's talking about him having to go get his knee drained. Yep. That's how. And that's the, the knee that he had issues with after the, the Achilles injury. No balls, one strike to Blanco. There goes Galvis, pitches tapped foul. That was a running lead for Freddie Galvis. That ball right there hit Ryan right below the knee. The patella tendon runs up and up through the knee, and he says it hit it right off the right where the patella tendon runs. Mm. Really interesting how he's keeping him close at first base. Out of play down the left field line. Blanco, 327 in his last 35 games. He was a pinch hitter last night. And he went down on strike, surprisingly. So he chokes up a little bit just to give himself a little more command of the bat. Back toward the middle, off the mound. Desmond has it. 
A little pirouette. Throws Blanco out. Side is retired. No runs, no hits. One man left, just a one out walk. We head to the second. It's the Nats one and the Phillies nothing. Games here at Citizens Bank Park. Three of those games come against the New York Mets. You want to stop by Citizens Bank Park at any time? You can get a glimpse inside the majestic clubhouse store, find the hat you want, get ready for the offseason if you choose. Plenty to select from. Clint Robinson takes low. It's two balls and no strikes to Robinson as we begin the top of the second. Side Andres Blanco and one away. Good pitch, good movement on that 2 0 fastball. Nice to see. Yeah, it was kind of interesting talking to Dave Brundage today, who's the AAA manager. He's up with the club in September. Chooch's glove. It's a late movement, very at the very end where you think you're going to barrel it. It goes off towards the end. Another broken bat. This one is shortstop. Ernie Galvis throws out Ian Desmond. But Dave was saying that when David came back down to Lehigh Valley after that game against Arizona, he said his confidence was really shaken. And you talked about that too, Matt. That and Murph talked about it the last time David pitched. That it's all about confidence with David. So what they tried to do was just kind of get him right. You know, they've adjusted his they adjusted his wind up a little bit, and they just reinforced. A, what he did last year when he won six games in the big leagues. And they reinforced being positive. Yeah, it's a lot of it is about right Tabesa. Yes, it is. Inside, one and no. no. So the hands over the head, that was just to kind of change the focus. Right, and I think it's what it is. That's just it. I mean, you could tell him to do the Louis Tiant wind up. You know, the biggest thing is he's not the last player, he's not the first player to ever give up that many runs over three games. It's just a matter of now all of a sudden you start doubting yourself. You start thinking too much. Arizona, he was overthrowing. He had no idea how to get out of the little trouble he was in. So we thought he'd overthrow a little bit. Now all of a sudden the ball got flat. Next thing you know, balls are flying out of the ballpark. Back toward the middle. Galvis can't get to it. Ramos is aboard with a two-out single. Well, that was just it, overthrowing it. I think that's a great way of putting it. Dave even talked about that. He said, listen, I try to explain to him, he's not going to throw 95, 96. So the harder he tries to throw it, it doesn't always mean he's going to reach those numbers. He's just got to be who he is, basically. And realize that he can get big league hitters out. Well, and it worked for Robinson. He threw a 90-mile-an-hour sinker. 
2-0 out in front, broke his bat. Threw a 91-mile-an-hour sinker to Desmond, shattered his bat. That one's hit sharply into left center field. Galvis was shaded over toward the hole. And Wilson Ramos is going to go to third. I don't know if there was a miscommunication in left if the ball died, but there was a lot of time to enable Wilson Ramos to go to third base on that line drive one hopper to left field. Yeah, I mean, the ball's hit hard enough past Freddie to his left. There was some lack of communication. You know, that's a ball where Sweeney's going to his left. He needs to take it and do that little spin and come out firing. Yeah. Strasburg takes a strike, a breaking ball. It's 0 1. But if Odubel can get that ball, that's his because he has a better angle coming into third base. Absolutely. Momentum's carrying him toward the bag. Outside. Buchanan must feel pretty good about his curveball tonight. He looked good against Jason Worth. Yeah. He throws the fastball there. Tooch just signaled something. What did he just signal? Get it out there. I wanted the fastball away. Get it out there. And throw it, it come throw back. it to the glove. Don't glide it or don't try to baby it to the glove. That was that gesture. Get out there. He decided to go with a changeup in that spot, and Strasburg fouls it at home plate. There remains one ball and two strikes here in the top of the second. Strike three called. He finally got that curveball to drop in there for the second strikeout of the night. No runs, two hits, two men left. Middle of the second. Time to go get some crab fries and then come back and watch the Phils hit. They're down one nothing.
on from 6 until 8 p.m. You can also reach out to them at breakfastonbroad.com or reach out to them on Twitter as well. We'll probably keep talking about the Eagles' loss last night to the Falcons. Look ahead to this week's matchup. And the last game of this series between the Phils and the Washington Nationals. See, I don't like looking in the dugout and seeing David Buchanan shaking his head. Like that negative thoughts, you got to leave it. I mean, you get out of the inning with two knocks, you struck the pitcher out, leave it alone. All right? That's where the mental game comes in. You put it behind you. Well, and every ball player, I would think, goes through it at different points of their life. It's yeah. Especially when, younger players. Yeah. Because they think every pitch they throw is going to impress the manager, which will bring them for another start or bring them for a next year. Cody Ashy fouls the first pitch over the screen. It's 0 1. Talking to Cody today about his home run last night, his three run home run, which tied the game at six. I said, That was a shot. And he just laughed a little bit. I said, Did you see the catch? He goes, Oh, I saw the catch. He goes, That was an amazing catch <laughs> by the fan in uh, right center field. I said, You know, he robbed you of the ball going into the bullpen. But it was a great grab. So we're gonna miss one and two. Well, not very often do you see the uh, the Hyundai defensive play of the game and the WB Mason <laughs> delivering the same play. It was honestly one of the best catches you'll see for a fan. See Aaron Harang talking to uh, David Buchanan. It's always good to have a veteran try to pick up the youngster. Talking about getting around his curveball instead of getting on top of it right there. You see the gesture, his hand coming away from his body. Say, if you want to study from somebody, take the big man on the mound right now, pull up his video of how he throws the curveball. Perfect form when he throws that 12 to 6 curveball or a little slurve one. Well, there's the 12 6 up the first base line. Robinson has it. And one away. I wonder if he'll ever reach the expectations that people had for him. And I know he probably, Tony Gwynn, the late Tony Gwynn used to talk about Stevens expectations for himself. I wonder if he'll reach the expectations. I mean, he was the first overall pick. Uh, you know, I, uh, no, this is just my opinion. I think he will. I think he's going to have a, an up. Unbelievable breakout year. Sooner than later, when he decides he wants to do it. Because he came out a few years ago and said, I just want to be one of those guys. I just want to be another starting pitcher. No chance. You give me that type of arm, I want to be the guy. Well, and you talk about that kind of arm, 96, 97, whatever it is, uh, 99 when he first came up, but also the secondary pitches. Oh, it's... You know, I mean, he's throwing the fastball changeup, and, and you know, he's X nay the no more slider. That's gone. Up high, two and one to Darren Ruff. Pinch hit last night, 0 for 1 in that appearance. You give me that arm and that stuff, I will be the, the meanest person on that mound. It'll be a very uncomfortable at bat. Because you have the stuff to back it up. Absolutely. Straight up shallow center field. Michael Taylor. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, this was actually a very entertaining game today. The Cubs and the Pirates. Cubs had a... Uh, the Pirates had a 4-1 lead. The Cubs tied it, and then the Pirates won it. That's game one of a doubleheader. So the Pirates win it 5-4. Pittsburgh is red hot. They're two games out in the National League Central. Game two has the Cubs leading it 1-0. That, that one's in the second. St. Louis, by the way, is in Milwaukee. Ground ball left side. Desmond's up with it. Good hustle by Bogusevic. It was awfully close. They may hold the defense here for a moment. 
on Samuel and Bogusevic both looked in. Pete McCannon's going to step up. And they do ask the defense to hold on. And the Phillies will confer to see if they want to review that or not. Ask for a challenge. Boy, that is really I close. It just got him. I think it may have just gotten him also. By a hair. Good hustle. Yeah, he was busting it out of the box. One, two, three, go the fills. As we go to this third inning. Oh, we had crab fries. Now it's time for cheese sticks. Log on to phillies.com. Go to the fans section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. Matt, the question is, which national is the University of Missouri's first ever first round draft pick? Missouri Tigers, that is. I've been out there, Matt. Have you ever been out there? It's a nice campus. No. No. Anthony Rendon will lead it off. I don't go near a lot of universities or schools. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't allowed to attend them very often. I think they take you now. Yeah. Hockey coach. Inside corner, 0 and 2. Rendon. Rendon, Escobar, and Harper. A lot of college questions for you recently. Yeah, I'm brutal. I'm not very happy about it either. Yeah. Throwing you curve. Change, change up. up. <laughs> okay, we'll try to use words to see if we can foreshadow which pitches he's going to throw. Inside, two and two. I know it wasn't Bryce Harper. No. He's under the high school. <laughs> Well, he went to a junior college first. No. He well, I know finished high school early. Yeah. So we get a miss. Strikeout number three for David Buchanan. What a way. You know, Escobar is coming up. Well, tomorrow the Phillies and the Nats will wrap up this three game series, and fans coming to the ballpark will receive the free Phillies Hope Francis rookie card and information about his upcoming visit and the World Meeting of Families Congress, which will be available at kiosks. Inside the first and third base gates. And a reminder NBC 10 is your best source of information about the Pope's visit. Make sure to tune in before and throughout the historic events. Both of these franchises will have their cities uh, envelop all of the people that are going to come out and see Pope Francis, as well as New York City. A one pitch to Escobar.
they're expecting many people here, aren't they? Well, oh yeah. What, one and a half million. Yeah, I mean it's hard to dictate it, but I, I've heard that number. I've heard over a million. Phillies will be in Washington when the Pope is here. There's a line drive to right center field. Bogusevic on the run. He won't get it. It's going to go to the wall. Now Escobar's on his way to second base, and he'll be there standing. 22nd double of the year. And Bryce Harper's coming up. Last time up, Bryce Harper, Matt. Off speed pitch down the middle of the plate. And that's what he's been doing all year long. Not watching that long, but hitting mistakes. Well, first base is open, so you have to be careful with them here. Outside, one to know. It's having one of those years where it's hard to figure out how to play him. Well, if we were having a scouting report meeting, which we had when I was a player, and uh -huh. you want to have them each day? Well, I mean, with him, you'd say one step on the wall <laughs> or high on the wall. I think you say, remember how Chipper Jones used to play left field? That's how we're going to play him. <laughs> Having one of those years, he's locked in. 335, 38, 87. Mm -hmm. 107 runs. 110 walks. Or 111. He did walk last night. 34 doubles. Change up. I thought that was low. Two and one. May have been just a tad. Back toward the middle. Over the bag in the center field. Escobar's around third heading home. And he will score. Second RBI for Harper. 2 0 Washington. Location. Dull ball location right now. That's supposed to be a fastball inside. Came back over the middle of the plate. Escobar doing. Uh, like a water slide. It looked like he was rolling on the slip and slide right there. <laughs> yep. Good play by Darren Ruff. That was not an easy throw to handle. Short hop throw to first base. Darren's got some pretty good hands over there. He's actually got very good hands. For a big man. Good hands, good feet. Up high and Worth who struck out his last time up on a bunch of breaking balls. Shortstop, that should be two. Nice play by Galvis, gets rid of it quickly. 6 4 3 double play. One run scores on the RBI single by Bryce Harper. He is both ribbies here tonight. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Phillies trail it by two.
when you buy right. Buy the Quality yeah, Plus okay. Ford stores. Go further and buy the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. Why do they keep showing us all that food? We've seen French fries, cheese steaks, and now we've seen uh, desserts. Funnel cake with a little fruit on top of it. They go French fries. Oh, man. Well, we have that at our disposal. Not the Reese's Pieces, but the ice cream. Maybe we can get uh, Frank and Sharon and folks in the uh, lunchroom to start adding some Reese's Pieces. What do you think, Matt? I would have no complaints. Off the hands of Ruiz, Ramos back. One away. One pitch. So Strasburg, 30 pitches so far. And David Buchanan will be the hitter. Quickly 0 and 2 to David Buchanan. So far, Strasburg has struck out two. Struck out Darnell Sweeney and Odubel Herrera, both in the first inning. And now he gets David Buchanan. Strikeout number three. And uh, Murph, when you talk about Strasburg and and guys like Max Scherzer, you talk about strikeouts. I know you're ready to do that with our uh, Coors Light facts. I am indeed Tom and you're right if you look at this Nationals pitching staff if there's one thing that they do very well it's that they throw strikes in fact they lead the league in strike percentage they lead the league in uh, strikes first pitch strikes and they also lead the league in strike to walkout ratio and you take a look not surprising the two of their starters and Steven Strasburg and Max Scherzer uh, in strikeouts per nine inning they are in the top five in in all of uh, the National League right there at Strasburg right up top at 10.32 it's what they do he's got three strikeouts tonight and uh, you know he's always pitched well against the Phils how about 101 strikeouts in 87 innings against the Phillies is Steven Strasburg so yeah, they don't walk a lot of guys as a staff and that includes the bullpen they do get a lot of strikeouts and he's a big reason why all right Murph we appreciate that Max Scherzer sitting in the middle Tanner Roark Dan Ugla Ugla has nothing to do with strikeouts from a pitching standpoint he's helped them he has yes he has <laughs> that's a good point thank you Matt for picking me up on that one Oliver when I saw that list and I saw Oliver Perez yeah I was shocked. Well, relievers can be part of it also. Well, and but I just you always think of him as a starter struggling. Right, and he's actually a very good relievers. You know, he has that that strikeout wind up, so that's probably helped him. Two two pitch to Sweeney. And a strike three called. Little deliberation by the home plate umpire before the call was made. Four strikeouts for Steven Strasburg. This is a nine pitch inning. Pitch number nine gets Sweeney looking. That was a changeup. We'll head to the top of the fourth.
coffee K-Cup pods. Great tasting coffee at amazingly low prices. Delivered free the very same day when you order by 11.30 a.m. W.B. Mason knocks it out of the park. Who but W.B. Mason. Fanatic making some friends. Probably scaring some others. Clint Robinson leads it off, takes a breaking ball up and away. One ball, no strikes. Robinson grounded out his first time up. That one softly out to right center field. And one out. And Desmond's coming up. He grounded out to shortstop his first time. Good location on that changeup. You know, again, Robinson in a, in a hitter's count. 2 0 the first time up. Nice sinker. This time, 1 0. Very good location, very good changeup. Very good curveball. Yeah, now it's just a, I'm sorry, Tom. It's just a matter of now of repeating the delivery and continuing to take baby steps and getting better on every pitch. To his left, Galvis is there. And there are two outs. I was about to say that there's a lot of positives through the first three and two thirds for him. There tonight. is. I mean, you know, Harper hit a hanging curveball. I have no problems whatsoever if a pitcher gives up hits on the ground. There's nothing you can do about it. A base it on the ground is a base it on the ground. It's just good placement. But it's when the balls are getting crushed to left center, right center, off the walls in right field and left field is when the balls are elevated, and that's when you're making mistakes. Tapper foul and it's 0 and 1 to Wilson Ramos. He singled his first time up. Three plus innings, 52 pitches. And David has not had a three ball count yet tonight. His last outing, he walked uh, three against the Nationals, but against the Braves in just three and a third, he walked three. Didn't strike anybody out tonight. No walks, three strikeouts. A high pop up. Freddie Galvis on the infield grass. Side is retired. That's a six pitch inning for David Buchanan. Nothing across for the Nationals. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Freddie Galvis will lead it off when we come back. of the Philadelphia Phillies. Buy Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop Nissan.com. And buy Budweiser. Still brew the hard way. This Bud's for you. Well, Matt Stairs and Greg Murphy. I'm Tom McCarthy. We'll shift to the bottom of the fourth inning. Earlier today, the Moyer Foundation honored David Montgomery uh, with their uh, Legends Award. It was a beautiful luncheon. There's David giving his speech. Karen Moyer, Jamie's lovely wife. And there's Jamie. 
Still needs a haircut. For the years before being appointed chairman. But it was a great moment, not only for the Phillies organization, but also for David and his family. And hey, anytime you can give David Montgomery a Legends Award, it's worth it. Absolutely. Galvis fouls it back. Champion for Children's Luncheon is the event uh, Jamie talked to Murph about earlier. Uh, it brings together hundreds of Philadelphia business leaders and folks in the community to support the foundation's mission to provide comfort, hope, and healing to children affected by loss and family addiction. You know, we said yesterday that Ryan Howard is this year's representative of the Roberto Clemente Award and a very uh, appropriate honor for Ryan and his wife, Crystal. You could probably give that award out every year to Jamie and Karen. Here's Ryan. No balls, two strikes. Galvis calls time. Alonzo Moyer Foundation. That's been what, over 20 years now. Boy, that's a great question. It's got to be at least that. He was in Seattle. Early, I think it was mid 90s. Not before that. Chopper right side. And Rendon is up with it. What out here in the fourth inning? Well, this is what we can do, Matt. I am on the Moyer Foundation page. Making history since 2000. 2000. Helping more causes and more children in distress each year. Wow. It's a long time. Congratulations to Karen and Jamie for doing tremendous work. And his family. Eight kids. Seven kids. <laughs> I don't know if he has a new one yet. <laughs> Oduble takes a breaking ball. Jamie just texted me, says it's been 15 years and he does not need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Fastball 0 and 2. And then, to he, and then he dropped the thanks chopper. I got eight kids. <laughs> Outside one and two to Herrera. Herrera is hitting four straight. He has 130 hits. Or I should say 133 hits this year. Mm. He's on pace to get close to 150. He's going to be over 140 for the season. Strikes out for the second time, two away. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T Mobile. Way back burgers, uh, Matt. Now the, I know where those are. Those are down the left field line, past the HK statue, and all around the Delaware Valley, by the way, too. In fact, you could probably follow Jim Salisbury if you see him on the road, and he probably will stop there from time to time. So we got a miss, 0 2. That is his favorite burger place. Andres grounded out to shortstop his first time up. It's actually a ball up the middle handled nicely by Desmond. He throws the bat at the ball on this one. Not as uh, not as lengthy as his bat toss last night. That's more the contact toss. The other one was the let it fly. See how far it'll go. That's that's the great change up that we have not seen a lot from Strasburg. The battle swing. Change up outside at eighty nine. A change up at eighty nine. <laughs> There's Jimmy. He likes himself some way back burgers. Right. 
back to back strikeouts. He has six now. Phillies go down in order here in the fourth inning. So quickly, there are four in the books here in Philadelphia. Jim Salisbury is contemplating his next move as we go to the top of the fifth. Oh, which national is the University of Missouri's first ever first round draft pick? Do I get a hint? Well, he, he wasn't actually selected by the nationals. He was selected by another team. Oh, Max. Max Scherzer, Scherzer. is correct. Good Number hint. one pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Thank you. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. That ball apparently hit the foot. Of Michael Taylor. Ball moved pretty good to hit the foot of somebody, didn't it? I don't think that hit his foot. No, it didn't. Cannot review it, though. I don't think it hit his foot. Good change up. Should have ran. <laughs> Save you a punch out. <laughs> Five in a row retired by Buchanan. And that's four strikeouts for the Phillies right hander. And Strasburg's coming up. Him up and it's 0 and 2. Strike three. Not fooling around at all with Strasburg there. Two outs, five strikeouts. Well, an update from the Eastern League playoffs. The Reading Fightins have taken a 1 0 lead over the Bowie Bay Sox. Brock Stasi's home run. Has made it a one nothing ball game. That's game one. Zach Eflin's on the mound. Don't forget special ticket offer to see the Reading Fighting Phils against the Bay, Spot, Bay Sox at First Energy Stadium tomorrow night. Post game fireworks. Order tickets by going to Fightins.com and use the code Phillies to receive three dollars off any ticket. And as I've mentioned before, if you have never been to the ballpark, Matt has played at the ballpark in Reading, whether he remembers it or not. It's the same park. It is a great place to watch a game. A few years ago. You played out and played in that park on a couple of different occasions for Harrisburg and for New Britain. Good old Beehive Stadium <laughs> in New Britain. <laughs>
Upstairs, one and two. You may not have played in Bowie's ballpark because that was under construction and they were using other facilities when you were in the Eastern League if the second time. A liner out to right field, Bogusevic waits, and another easy inning for David Buchanan. That's a 10 pitch inning. He's thrown nine, he threw nine strikes in the inning. He's retired seven consecutive hitters. And now we go to the bottom of the fifth looking for a little offense. And Seth Joyner to evaluate the X's and O's of the Eagles season opener against the Falcons. Catch Eagles Extra tonight at 11 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. I don't know what they're doing to us tonight, but now we're going to Federal Donuts. Assuming. And we're getting some donuts and getting some chicken. I still want one of those burgers and crab fries. All right, well, if you get the burgers, you have to go down the left field line, and then you have to get the crab fries. You're going to go to right center field well, to the Ashburn Alley. Okay, but I was looking to have someone bring it. For me, because if I wanted exercise, I would not get a burger and I would not get crab fries. Maybe throw throw a federal donut in there too, huh? huh? That'd be all right. Bottom of the fifth inning. Steven Strasburg is throwing a no hitter, Matt. Yes, he is. He's allowed one base runner. That was a walk in the second to Freddie Galvis. Delivers the change up outside. It's one and zero. Oh. The walk to Freddie Galvis was four straight balls out of the zone. Yeah, and he was out of whack a little bit to start the Herrera at bat, but then got back into mainstream. You know, we get all the stuff from Bloomberg, and I was looking at the stats and, and the percentages of pitches thrown. Strasburg's last game, he only threw 5% changeup. And he has a good curveball, he has an, an overpowering fastball. I always thought his changeup was his best pitch because it's the same rotation, same arm slot. It's 89. You can't determine if it's a fastball or a changeup. Yeah, I think I was surprised, but for a guy like that, uh, open minded about the fact he threw all those fastballs last time. Yeah. But I think he needs to if he has a fastball like, like he has. Well, and I think the reason why he doesn't throw a slider anymore is because the league's at 600 against it. High two and two. Yeah, she pops it up foul. Yep, I Matt, I think you have to hold up signs instead of uh, pressing the talk back button. Yeah. Well, we had a we had a big leak here, and it, and it leaked right down on top of the of this thingamajig. The box. The box. Ground ball, right side, a base hit oh, for Cody Ashy. First hit of the night for the Phils. As we begin the home fifth inning, 
Well, they took care of the no hitter. Now let's see them take care of the shutout. Cota's been swinging the bat a lot better, feeling looking a lot more comfortable. You know, you see the low target. Curveball just left up in the zone. Top hand. He made a nice adjustment last night on the home run. The pitch before that, he got a little late with his foot down. Didn't use his top hand. Got his foot down last night and used the top hand. That's the reason why he hit a three-round bomb to right center. So we get a miss. Darren Ruff's uh, fly ball, his last time up, up until that butt base hit by Cody Ashey, was the only ball out of the infield. Said about six times we've seen that the step off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, he did it at least uh, four times against Freddie Galvis. That's twice he's done it with Cody. Ruff checks his swing. Strasburg thought that was probably a strike anyway. One ball, two strikes to Darren Ruff. Swing and a miss. Here's that slow curve. Seven strikeouts. Well, speaking of strikeouts, it's time now for our GMC Precision Plays of the game. Well, he's had every pitch working. Swinging, curveball, fastball, Herrera. Swinging again, changeup looking. Herrera again, fastball, elevated fastball. Blanco, elevated fastball. Well, he's been precise with it. Seven strikeouts. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 1. It's two at bats for Bogusevic, and both times you start him off with changeups. That's going back to where I was talking about one of the keys. Pick your pitch. Pick your pitch. For the, until two strikes. Until two strikes. Who would be a pitcher that you would do that with when you were playing? Is there somebody that stood out? Pedro Martinez. Didn't help. But you had a game plan. Had a game plan. Toyota Major League scoreboard. Rematch of a World Series gone by. Braves two, Blue Jays one. AJ Przinsky has a couple hits. Blue Jays lead over the Yankees is a game in the East. The Yankees are currently playing Tampa down in Tampa. Is that Tehran for Atlanta? Julio Tehran uh, is pitching, I believe, for Atlanta against Mark Burley. Mark Burley. One ball, one strike. Foul back. Not a bad pitch to go after. No, it was actually a pretty good pitch to hit. 96 mile an hour yeah. heater. Up, elevated a little bit, not too high.
High fastball swung out and missed. Ashy is back. And Bogusevic strikes out. Eight strikeouts now for Strasburg. He's starting to rack them up. Eight strikeouts with two outs here in the fifth inning. All the way to fastball. And we talk about how good that pitch looks up there. Almost literally impossible to get on top of it. Carlos fouled out his first time up on the first pitch he saw. Well, his splits are really good too. I mean, that was pitch number 67 that he's thrown. 48 strikes, 19 balls. Swing and a miss. He got him. He struck out the last three batters. Nine strikeouts through five innings for Strasburg. He allowed the first hit of the night, a leadoff single by Cody Ashy. But he has been near perfect this evening. Impressive first season. Out of the Rule 5 draft and into the lineup, Odubel Herrera is covering all parts of the Phillies outfield and is among the best NL rookies in average, doubles, infield hits, and stolen bases. He is the first Philly with 25 doubles and 14 steals since Jimmy Rollins did so in 2001. El Torito has grabbed the bull by the horns in 2015, and it's brought to you by. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, it's kind of a smorgasbord going on here at Citizens Bank Park. We go from the fries to the burgers to the funnel cake to the federal donuts to a little sausage and peppers. Pretzels on the left. There's a lot to take in here at Citizens Bank Park. You know, Escobar will lead it off. He doubled and scored back in the third. Seven straight batters retired by David Buchanan as we begin the top of the sixth. Now toward right center field, Bogusevic and Herrera, and it's Herrera who tracks it down. Boy, he is just wonderfully gifted with speed. He is. Had a very nice jump. Delicate communication going on, yelling, I got it, I got it. David Buchanan likes it. Now, outfield fact any ball that's hitting the gap, the corner outfielders always go deeper on the route. On the route. 
So the, the center fielder comes across, trying to make the play, and then the outfielders, the corner outfielders, go behind the center fielder on a play like that. To back up. To back up. So if he tries to dive for it, at least the right fielder or the left fielder is backing up. And also, it, it, you stay away from collisions. Well, it pays when you got a, a center fielder that fast because you know it's going to happen. Then. Right. And it's always given, and I'm not sure if these guys do it in the outfield, but it's always given by signs. You know, you reach over to this or yell to the center fielder, you'll give him the sign of where I'm going, and he has the front, I have, you know, I'm backing him up. A lot happened in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why it's so important to have the communication mm -hmm. before the pitch is thrown, before the hitter steps in. Got to be careful when it Harper's up, even with Worth on deck. But sometimes when you're too careful, you throw too good of a pitch. Because you're trying to guide it to a certain spot. One out walk. Harper's been on base three times tonight. Murph, what do you got, buddy? Well, it's time for our T Mobile fan photo of the game, Tom. As promised earlier, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. It comes from at the KLK. She says, representing the Phillies at home and on the road. So obviously, with HK, that's here. And she's at the Giants. Trying to figure out that third one though. I can't. Uh, I can't place oh, that ball. Uh, I think that's. I that looked at the that light stand. That looks like uh, Nationals Park. Is that Nationals Park? All right. That would have been my guess to be honest with you. All right. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag photo data strong fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. All brought to you by Timo. You know what? I that may not be Nationals Park. I, I was. Good. That would have been my guess. I, I was thinking Nationals or City Field. No, it's not City Field. No. Oh. Not enough signage. <laughs> All right, then we'll go with our first. Well, selection. maybe we'll hear from Ed K L K. Yeah, so she'll let us know. Jason Worth takes up an in two and zero. Jason is zero for two. He is struck out. Grounded into a double play. in the same spot. Jason Worth draws a walk back to back walks. Clint Robinson to the plate. Luis Garcia warming up. This is just a two nothing game, so Tim Cannon wants to keep it at that. Robinson tonight is grounded out. He's also flied to center. He swung at the first pitches last time. Swings at the first pitch here. That should be a double play. Galvis to the bag for one, and it is a double play. Double play ball has helped out David Buchanan twice tonight. No runs, no hits. One man left. Middle of the sixth. Nationals two. Phillies nothing.
McDonald's with a double cheeseburger and small fry for just two fifty. McDonald's, ah, I'm loving it. And buy your Del or Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com. Well, time now for our Hyundai defensive plays in the game. The double play balls help David Buchanan. It really has. Jason Worth hit a one hopper to Freddie Galvis. Quick feed to Blanco at second base. And this has finished the last inning. Very good two seam fastball off the bat of Robinson for a 4 3 double play. Those are your Hyundai defensive play of the games brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. David Buchanan's night is done. He's talking with Bob McClure while Chase Darno will pinch hit for him. Darno pinch hit last night. Well, nice job by David Buchanan. I, yes. He needed this. I know he gave up two runs, but he scattered five hits. He was around the strike zone with authority. Brown ball towards short. Man, did he break his bat? One away. Well, we are two lucky guys. <laughs> Not only did we get way back burgers, but Ta -da! yeah, Matt got his crab fries. Yeehaw. Folks here at uh, Aramark and all around the ballpark, they take care of us. Take, take, taking care of who? Uh, hey, Murph, what's going on? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. What are you getting? Some funnel cakes? Murph, hey, listen, you're more than welcome. You get all the seeds. Get my water. Yeah, you get all the <laughs> seeds that you want. You get all the seeds and bubble gum that you could ask for. <laughs> yeah, they're caught in my shoe right now. <laughs> Which one? The seeds or the bubble gum? <laughs> listen, if you want to come up here, there will be plenty of fries left. I can't tell you there'll be a burger left, though. All right. Enjoy, fellas. Yeah. Cheers. At the knees, it's one and one. Ball of two strikes to Darnell Sweeney, who's 0 for 2. I figure I might as well live it up the last couple of weeks before I go back on neutral system, so why not? Can't wait to see you. Check swing. Did Sweeney go? No, this is the third base umpire. We appreciate Matt uh, providing our food shots tonight. <laughs> as you can see, as you can see, Matt eats a lot of this food, yeah. not. not. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Darnell Sweeney. Fouls it off to the left. Although Matt's in a perfect spot, as we found out. If you want something, you can order it while you're down there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't scare the folks, Matt. <laughs> in the dirt, three and two. Not many three ball counts for Strasburg. He walked Galvis on four pitches earlier. Only his second three ball count, as you can imagine. <laughs> Only one hit allowed. Out to center field. He got it just in on his hands. Two outs. Freddie Galvis coming up. The most popular way to follow the action of Phillies baseball is with MLB.com at bat. Their number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, highlights, replay reviews, scores, stat cast, live radio broadcasts, and more. Get the MLB.com app. Today. Freddie Galvis is grounded out and walks. Check swing. Boy, that's a tough pitch to hold up on. That breaking ball, it's so good.
got a piece of Wilson Ramos. Yeah, and it's a very good curveball. That one there was a little lower when it came out of his hand. Usually Strasburg's big curveball is a little higher. This is a little lower. So it's a little easier to recognize that it's going to be a ball if you pick the rotation up. This is the one that starts up here. That's the knee buckler. Outside, talking to Freddie about his home run last night against Jonathan Papelbon. Uh, I said, Were you looking for the split? He said, No, he is. I was looking high fastball. He said, and it turned out it was a high splitter, and he was able to adjust on the fly. He said he was surprised that it stayed high, though. He said, Usually, Pap's splitters go down and away. I did ask him, I said, Did you notice whether Pap. Uh, was calling his pitches. You know how he used to call his pitches here. Yep. He said he didn't do that with me. He said, but he definitely did it with Frenchie. There's Jonathan Papelbon. Another one fouled away by Galvis. Remains two and two. Papelbon suffered his first blown save last night, but got the win. First time since Jay Happ. That a pitcher won for the Phillies and beat the Phillies in the same year. Hmm. Jay did that when he went to the Astros. Foul tip. Another strikeout. That's 10 K's tonight for Steven Strasburg. He's allowed one hit. That was in the fifth inning. He sets them down in order. And we'll go to the seventh inning. It's 2 0 Nationals on top of the Phillies. Now for your local Honda dealers game summary 2 nothing Nationals Bryce Harper's accounted for both runs a home run and an RBI single David Buchanan did a nice job tonight through six innings Steven Strasburg meanwhile six innings one hit 23 strikeouts in the last two games for Strasburg so we go to the top of the seventh that Ian Desmond will lead it off against Luis Garcia. Garcia chops the first pitch out to Andres Blanco. One away. These lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They were interested to see the prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank.
Ramos takes low 1 and 0. Garcia did not have a particularly good night last night out of the bullpen for the Phils. His command was uh, definitely an issue. Walk single fielder's choice and the Nationals had the lead for good. One ball no strikes to Ramos. And it's one and one. That's the slider he wants to throw. When he's trying to get a strike the first one he threw he bounced. That's a strikeout slider. That's what the relievers got to realize that they need to throw sliders for strikes at times. And then with two strikes that's when you put the old snap dragon on the plate. Oh he's back. I gave him the way back burger. And he is excited about it. <laughs> he asked where the condiments were and I said we'll have to take care of that himself. <laughs> now I feel like I shouldn't eat my burger. Why? <laughs> Watch to see who finishes it first. No, oh, no, that's post game. Oh, okay. He loves way back burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Jim Salisbury. <laughs> Two two pitch in the air to left field. Darnell Sweeney on the run back into that crevice toward 387. It's off his glove. Ramos is going to wind up at second base. Yeah, that'll wind up being uh, well we'll see how they score it. It was there. It was in his glove. He went a long way but he had it. Hit him actually hit him in the palm of well, his hand. Well, they scored E7, and it was a ball that was catchable. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Ramos wishes they scored it a double, but I, I think if Darnell, if you ask him, and he is very honest when you ask him questions about certain plays. Over to left side, Ramos making a base running mistake, and they get it. 6 5 of the put out. Fielder's choice. Well, I think he got caught up with the big chopper thinking that his wheels are going to kick in. He's going to be able to beat it. Mm, I'm sorry, Wilson, but nope. Buffalo is out of control right there. Yeah, he was rumbling. Strasburg is struck out twice outside 1 0. Outside again, two balls, no strikes. Phillies baseball, this will get you going, Matt. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Budweiser still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. They will not deliver that to you in the I booth. I will not ask to <laughs> deliver to the booth. I love my job too much. <laughs> I'm very happy to have my Diet Coke. Uh huh. Grab fries. Good. Well, now he's got it even two and two. Yeah, I eat those French fries and that hamburger. I might have to walk back to the Omni tonight. <laughs> nah, just uh, increase, increase your workout. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me to run. <laughs> it's 
Speaking of running, Taylor will be off on this pitch. He goes. Oh boy. He just walked Strasburg to put runners on first and second. So two runners on. Anthony Rendon's coming up. See Matt, we can find some fruit if we need to. Billings Fantasy Camp is the sports experience where anything becomes possible. The 20th of January till the 24th. Join legends like Mike Schmidt, John Kruk, Greg Wazinski, Matt Stairs, Mill Thompson, and so many more. Also take part in a hitting clinic that Mike's going to put on. Create the memories that last a lifetime. Book now at philliesfantasycamp.com. Rendon is 0 for 2. He's grounded out, struck out, and flied out. Breaking ball, and it's 0 and 1. Last night, allowing the hit to Jordan Zimmerman hurt the Phils. Let's hope the walk to Strasburg does not hurt the Phillies here. Play and it's 0 and 2. Adam Lowen warming up for the bullpen. It'd be very interesting to see how Garcia grips his the pitches that he throws. Like if he puts more pressure on the index finger at times, if he wants to throw a sinker, is he putting, you know, because sometimes. Like there. Like that, he'll spike it. it. Gets away from Ruiz and puts runners on second and third. Which means that he is choking the baseball, squeezing too tight. It's a slider. Mm -hmm. Tough play for Chutes to block. See how deep it is back in his hand. This is a tough spot with Rendon up two in scoring position. The one two pitch lays off. In. Nope. Check swing. Did he go? He. Ooh. Oh, wow. Wow. That was an awfully good hold if he held up. And it's full three and two. Yeah, he held. Well, that was close. It was close. Swing and a miss. He got him. He went back with some heat. He threw it upstairs. Rendon is retired, and the Nationals leave a couple in scoring position. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia. The Phils in search of some runs.
to the fills with one hit so far. Still going out against Steven Strasburg. Headed into extra innings and need a boost. Call WV Mason and order Green Mountain Coffee K Cup Pods. Great tasting coffee at amazingly low prices delivered free the very same day when you order by 1130. WB Mason knocks it out of the park. Who but WB Mason? Well, Luis Garcia is able to get through that inning. He did allow a couple of base runners. Interesting, Jeff Francoeur is there with part of that conversation. A little hitter's perspective, maybe? Absolutely. And actually, a, a hitter can actually learn from listening to the pitching coach talking to the pitchers of the thought process yeah. of pitching towards right handed hitters. Oduble well, takes a strike. Oduble has struck out twice. Swing and a miss. It's 0 2. His timing's off just a little bit tonight against Strasburg. To the last two outings that he's had, 23 strikeouts. And he struck out for the third time. It's not often that you see Oduble go down on strikes this many times in a game. That's 11 strikeouts for Strasburg. Think Energy, the smart choice to power your home. Go to mythinkenergy.com slash Phillies. You know, not very often do you see Herrera strike out three times on fastballs. Yeah, I would agree with that. Outside corner, it's 0-1. Seems to have, I mean, it's an easy statement to make. He's thrown 90 pitches, 66 strikes, but he's got everything going tonight. His fastball, good command of the changeup, not throwing it as much as the curveball. Two pitch to Blanco. He went upstairs and he picks up his 12th strikeout. So 13 in his last game and a dozen here tonight. Cody Ashy's due up. The elevated fastball again. Now it's not like a broken record, but it looks so hittable that high. When you swing, you're like, man. Eight of those strikeouts have come in the last four innings for Strasburg. Ashy has the only hit. That was his last time up. Last eight outs have come with six punch outs. That's pretty good. He's locking it in. One and one. Change up. He doesn't pitch inside a lot to left handers. I mean, he really doesn't. He uses a lot of fastballs. Swing and a miss, and he gets Ashy. So for back to back ball games, Steven Strasburg has struck out 13. 13 in his last outing against the Mets, and 13 here tonight. All three strikeouts to break as we wrap up the bottom of the seventh inning. Oduble on a high fastball. Andres Blanco, high fastball. Cody Ashey, well, this time he dropped down with a changeup.
Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. By Jefferson, where health is all we do. Call 1-800-JEFF now or visit Jefferson.edu. And by Toyota, where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com today to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Out of the Phillies bullpen comes Adam Lowen. 14th ball game for Lowen. No wins, no losses. A 7.90 ERA. Adam Lowen has unveiled a brand new pitching style. This is a guy who was a pitcher, then an outfielder, now back to being a pitcher. He's learned a lot this year about himself and about his arm. And now he's dropped down, which they met three quarters. Yeah, very close to it. He did it in one bullpen session. He tried it in one bullpen session. And he's sort of cross firing. A little low, and it's 2 0. Oh. He is. I mean, you're looking at you know the arm angle now is coming. You know, not. I mean, he could go down lower. I, yeah. I think what you get caught up with is that the, his the turn of his shoulder. It seems like he's jumping towards the pitcher more. Or, I'm sorry, towards the hitter. Curveball or slider, I should say. Two and two. You know, you know what it does. It, it, actually, what I, I've noticed in his delivery, it looks like he's using his legs more now. Instead of relying on his arm speed, he's, he's relying on the power of his lower half. Fouls that one. Escobar does off his foot. You heard him say, ah, after the ball hit him. Shin guard, right? Yeah. There may be a bruise under that shin guard. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Try blacking a, a slap shot going 104 off your shin guard. <laughs> Outside three and two. Just a bit low. Ball four, and Escobar draws a leadoff walk. Oh, an update from Redding. The Redding Fightins. Art Charles has hit a home run to make it two nothing in the seventh inning. I like all this power coming from the Redding Fighting Phils. Well, that team has it's got they've got some prospects. They, they really do. Bryce Harper has walked, singled, and homered in tonight's game. Inside, 1 0. That is close of, to being a balk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been sort of toeing the line mm -hmm. for a lot of this year. Out to left field. Sweeney's on the run. Back toward the fence. And it is gone. Into the flower bed. Second home run of the night for Harper. And it's a 4 nothing ball game. 39 home runs for Bryce Harper. 
third home run of the series. Does have some crazy power. I mean, he really does. Left is right as it does not matter. I mean, look how hard he swings. Watch the lower half torque right here. Just drives off the lower half. Swings so hard he loses his balance. Head down. Finishes high. Man. Well, he's a young kid, but 10 multi home run games, fifth of the year. Chopper foul into the Nationals dugout. Two and two. Nationals lead it four nothing uh, up in New York. The Marlins are on top of the Mets. So the Nats, if they hold on here, could gain a game in the division. Two balls, two strikes to Worth. Three and two. Speaking of the Marlins, the last three games of the 2015 regular season here at Citizens Bank Park will come against the Fish. The second, third, and fourth. The fourth is Fan Appreciation Day. 2016 Philly schedule magnet prizes and surprises for all fans. We're coming to the yard that day. Three and two to Worth. You know, Bryce Harper's getting to that point where he is going to become a pitcher who's going to, or a hitter who's going to get a lot of attentional walks here pretty soon. I would agree with that. You, yeah, I would agree. You know, you look at one whole team. That's a rocket foul. You, know, you look at one, one whole team, and you pick out the one guy who is not going to beat me tonight, or in the series. And no disrespect to J Dub or any other players on the Washington Nationals. But Bryce Harper, if you are playing in a, a, a very important game, a game on the line, you better get the four fingers up and get the attention the Yeah, it may not. I mean, I don't know if you agree with this or not, Matt, as that ball is hit foul again. He breaks his back. It may even be like earlier in the game tonight where you would just walk him in a one nothing ball game with a runner at second base. Well, you have. But you made a great point, though. Saying that sometimes when you try to pitch around guys, you end up making mistakes. Yeah. You know, hit the ball back up the middle for an RBI. I know you're not for walking a guy intentionally early in a game, but hey, let's face it, there's certain spots where it does. No, I don't. I don't mind walking intentional guys early in the game. You know, Ben and I had this discussion. I'll walk the eight-hole hitter if there's a runners in scoring position in the first inning. I don't care. I don't care about rolling the lineup over. I care about putting a zero up on the board. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Worth strikes out. Run away here in the eighth inning. Because you always have that question in your mind what if? What if I didn't pitch the eight hole hitter? Yeah. What if I would have put him on? Well, Bob McClure out to the mound with Clint Robinson coming up. Must have seen something that he figured was important for him to point out. First thing you asked him if he's all right. 
Second thing you told him to do is relax. And then he covered his mouth up, and I had no idea what he said <laughs> after that. <laughs> you were really good until the hand went over the mouth, Matt, I have to say. Robinson waves at the pitch. It's 0-1. Good slider. I see where Bob told him to relax a little bit. You can tell his, he's not jumping as much towards the hitter. Staying a little more compact in his delivery. There he might have been a little too quick at the end. A little bit too quick. and fights it off. Toyota Major League scoreboard. Last night it was Prince Fielder's home run that gave the Rangers the victory over the Astros tonight. Already seven runs and they're in the top of the third. A battle for first place in the American League West. Let him long can get in the habit or or get to where he can throw really good two seam fastballs. He will eat up left handed hitters. Absolutely. Well, there you go. I mean, that was a pretty lively pitch right there. Which I think thought it may have been out number three. Here comes Pete McCann, and that'll be it. Ian Desmond's up. They're going to go to the right hander. And one thing about throwing a really good two seam fastball, either to lefties or to right handers. Then you work on the changeup. Now all of a sudden you're having a lot of right handers looking out over the plate, and your arm angle is going to be the same area for your fastball compared to your changeup. So a pitching change with Desmond due up for the Nationals. We'll be back to Citizens Bank Park right after this. Park. Every time the Phillies retire, the opposing team one, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. So he's maybe going off to sleep soon. Colton Murray is the new pitcher for the Phillies. Murray will take over with two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. Two runs are in on the home run by Bryce Harper. Fifth ball game for Murray. 
Six point seven five ERA. He's got an excellent breaking pitch. Good location. Wow. It's one and two. Outside, two balls, two strikes. To the sweets. You don't see that very often with a high fly ball. Yeah, it hit that bottom of the top of the signage just uh, enough to take a hop in. Just above Jeff. Another foul ball. And Desmond has been susceptible to that breaking pitch in this series. Last night he struck out four times. Got him. Foul tip Ruiz hangs on. Murray gets out of this eighth inning. Two runs scored though. On an opposite field home run for Bryce Harper. Helping the cause for Steven Strasburg. Giving him a little breathing room. Second home run of the night for Strasburg. I'm not sure which one was more impressive. Four nothing Nationals as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. of tonight's Phillies Nats matchup only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Always good to see Marlon around the ballpark. He's been around the last couple days. Darren Ruff will lead it off against Steven Strasburg as we begin the bottom of the eighth inning. First pitch breaking ball and it's 1-0. So we got to wondering about 
the last time a pitcher has had back to back 13 strikeout games as Strasburg has 13 last time 13 tonight. John DeSangro our associate producer has emailed uh, Elias Sports Bureau. And you'll be surprised to hear Matt. That Pedro it happened Martinez. that it happened. Just a couple of weeks ago. But I, I would I'm with you I would have thought maybe somebody like Pedro Martinez. That was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. National League or American League? National League. Strasburg? <laughs> uh, no, we'd be looking for three or four in a row at that point. I'd say they're. Oh, um, He's a reigning something. Bumpgardner? No. Kershaw? Yes. Clayton Kershaw. On the 28th of August and the 2nd of September. That's the last time somebody had back to back 13 or more strikeout games. Oh, and one to Bogusevic. He's 0 for 2. He's grounded to shortstop, but he is struck out. Oh, and 2. Pitches per inning. That was the 100th pitch of the night for Strasburg. He's one strikeout away from matching his career high. He did that against the Pirates back in 2010. And he has matched his career high. That's number 14 for Steven Strasburg. And since allowing the only hit of the night, leadoff single in the fifth, he's retired at 11 in a row. Very good changeup. You have to respect gearing up for 96 still in the eighth inning. Bogusevic has had a hard time tonight laying off that changeup. Fastball to Ruiz still at 95. Background ball softly to shortstop. Desmond's up with it. And another quickie inning for Steven Strasburg. 12 in a row retired by Strasburg since the only hit of the night. We'll head to the ninth inning. National shutting out the Phils.
Louis Cardinals uh, have had seen their lead str uh, strength in the Na National League Central down to two games, but they got a little bit of a boost tonight, guys. Matt Holliday is now coming back to their lineup. He has been on the DL for 40 games with that quad strain. He is available tonight. He is not in their starting lineup, but he is available to pinch it, and that should help the Cardinals going forward. And a strange play that happened today at Cubs versus Pirates. That game in Pittsburgh, you talked about it already. The Pirates won that game. Well, in the fifth inning, Cubs pitcher Trevor Cahill uh, led off the inning with a line drive single to right field. Pedro Alvarez charged it. The uh, Pirates right fielder picked it up and threw him out at first base. The good old 9-3 put out at first base. The throw, they estimate, went 106 feet to get Cahill at first. You don't see that very often. You guys. do not. You see it a lot. And Babe Ruth and yeah, well, things like that. That's true. Not the big leagues, though. Matt and I were watching the game. Murph, I don't know if you were in the office when this happened, but at one point, Gong hit a ball to right field yes. later in the game. Chris Coglin came up and, and was he tried it. and he tried it. Yeah, it was that was the bottom of the fifth, so that was the next half right. inning that they uh, was looking for a little payback. He should have picked the slower runner. <laughs> I don't know if nine three has ever happened twice in a major league game. Good question. John DeSangro. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Wilson Ramos here in the top of the ninth inning. Two and one. I believe I had Larry Walker try to throw me out at first base one time. Oh, yeah. He had the arm to do it. Yes, he did. Tim Salmon. Tried to throw you out? Yep. Did you ever try to throw anybody else out? You? Me? Yeah. All the time. I got burnt one time by trying to throw Justin Morneau out at first base. Threw it right over the first base from Oh, no, no, no. I threw it to first and kept on going and got the second base. <laughs> He'll show you. Yeah, I was like, he, he was a smarter Canadian than I was. One away. Second strikeout for Murray. And here's Michael Teller. Well, this is the reason why you sit fastball with two strikes. Because it's a fastball right down the middle. Watch his reaction. He knew he was sitting curveball. And got the heater. And it's because Murray has such a good curveball. Right. You know, I mean, he's got a very good fastball, too. That's why you have to respect a guy that throws that hard. Because, one, if Murray throws a good curveball, you are not hitting it. One ball, no strikes to Taylor. Toward left center field. It was toward the end of the bat, but it still goes a pretty good distance. Two away. Assumption is, is that Strasburg is done. Nationals do have bullpen action. And Matt Dendecker's coming up to pinch hit for him, so that answers the question. I should say the assumption after the inning was that. That was it for Strasburg. That was surprising. Well, I think we saw it earlier this year how dominant Zach Greinke was. Remember against the Dodgers, and he didn't come out and pitch the ninth inning. I'm going, going, five one, pitches. I'm going for one more punch out to get a career high. Oh, shoot. Well, I think that there's so much individual on the line. The career high in strikeouts. That's one. Just. A one hit shutout. That's where the game has changed. I mean, whether it's good or bad, it's the game has changed. Yeah, I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way the game the way the game it's has changed. Just the way the game is. It's just the way now you, how you protect pitchers. Balls and no strikes to Dendecker. Two and one. But in reality, you think about a one hit shutout. I mean, think about 10 years ago, or I mean, Randy Johnson, Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, 
Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens. Go back, you know, Steve Carlton, Tom Seaver. I mean, back then it was totally different, but you just wouldn't leave this kind of a game. Right. Particularly in September, particularly when you haven't pitched the entire year and you're most likely out of the race. You've only thrown 105 pitches. Right. But it's not his decision. It's not his decision. He's not alone right. in that. Three balls and one strike to Dendecker. That'll be foul, but far. Now, is it his decision? I would think it's his 80% or 100% during the game, but it's probably a conversation that he's had with everybody else, right? Well, I mean, it could be upstairs. Big man might say once he gets to 100, let's set him down. Mm -hmm. Check the swing and a high pitch, ball four. Think Roy Holiday would have came out of this no, game? No, not even no a little chance. bit. Nope. When he started the game, he expected to finish it. Speaking of Roy Holiday. If I was going to say Pete Incavilia, could you find an Incavilia jersey that quick? <laughs> Guys are unbelievable. <laughs> How quick they are! Hats off. It would be great if they found a Peter Gavilla jersey. Rendon takes low. What an O. Is that close enough, Matt? Saw him yesterday. That guy or? No. <laughs> well, you, which, which guy? The guy wearing the jersey or the guy that? Both. Uh, no, the guy wearing the jersey, I did not did not see him yesterday. The guy who had the name, well, you know what I mean. I got you. Which, I saw him yesterday or two days ago. Two balls, no strikes. And low 3 0. Can you believe the NHL hockey preseason starts Monday? I heard JJ talking about that. Jim Jackson. Thank you. Yeah, talking about that. NBA's right around the corner. Charlie's uh, pulled out all of his hockey gear to work the camera for the Nationals broadcast. Balls, one strike. Hillies in the their half of the ninth inning. We'll face the Nationals bullpen. It'll be a pinch hitter for Murray. Then the top of the order, Sweeney and Galvis. Toward the hole, backhanded by Galvis. Not in time to get Dendecker. It really was his only play. Yep. Give Dendecker credit going on contact with two outs. An update from Reading where the Fightins have taken game one of the Eastern League Championship against the Bay Sox three to one. Zach Eflin six innings five hits no walks five strikeouts. Here is the final out of the game. Oh man. That's some explosive stuff by Cordero. Don't forget tomorrow they'll play at 705. And if you go to Fightins.com and use the code Phillies you'll receive it three you receive three dollars off any ticket. Now Codero is the prospect they got from the Blue Jays. That correct? is correct. For the Ben Revere. They say he throws 
to throw 103? 100. Yeah, he's thrown over 100. Yeah. Uh, right there, that that looked like it had some life, and it looked like it was 100. Escobar to shortstop and Galvis this time from his knees throws out Rendon side is retired last opportunity for the Phillies. They will not face Steven Strasburg. They will face the Nationals bullpen. It's four nothing Washington as we go to the home night. Deliveries of the game. We were focusing on strikeouts. Well, we're going to focus on the power of Bryce Harper. Oh, the power he has in the first inning. Home run just over the 400 center, 100, 409 mark in center field. Then the eighth inning fastball off Adam Lowen showing how he uses a lower half for power. Hitting number 39 in the season. Fixing his hair, and that's why that's WB Mason deliveries of the game. So now the Phil's down by four as you see they've only managed one hit that it was a leadoff single by Cody Ashey in the fifth inning. Steven Strasburg strikes out 14. He walked only one it was Galvis with one out in the first. He goes eight innings. He's lifted after just 105 pitches. And now Blake Trinan will come on to get the last three outs if possible. Jeff Rancor is the first one he'll face. Mets are trailing 7 1 in the eighth inning. So if the Nationals can win tonight, they'd be within eight and a half. Magic number remains, I think it was at 11 last time I looked. Do you see that too, Matt? You are correct. Curveball, one and two. He did not think so. The hands spun towards second. Rendon, I'm not sure why he didn't try to catch that ball. I mean, it turned out to be an easy play anyway, but that ball's spinning, you never know. Yeah, that could have been a dangerous play. Well, he's better at it than. Both of us. And both of us. So. Murph, I don't know. But both of us. Murph would have caught it right out of the air. Murph's a good decision maker. 0 and 1 to Darnell Sweeney. 0 and 2. Don't forget we saw Murph's 
second base performance during the celebrity softball. It was an excellent tumble. Tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Oh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> Over to shortstop, Ian Desmond. Throws out Darnell Sweeney, two away. Well, again, the Phillies, two base runners tonight. The walk to Galvis in the first inning. And a single in the fifth inning by Cody Ashley to start it off. Well, Cody Galvis coming up. Sorry, Tom. If the game finished the way it is and it's a 4 nothing loss, I would imagine every player in there and the matches and the coaches and the manager are going to say he was unbelievable tonight, Strasburg. Hey, he looked unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, three pitches, all plus pitches tonight. One ball, one strike. To left field, this should do it. Jason Worth is under it. And a combined one hit shutout for Steven Strasburg and Blake Trinan. The Nationals take the first two games against the Phils. They win it tonight 4 0, and they've cut the lead to 8.5 in the National League East. A 14 strikeout performance for Steven Strasburg and a two home run performance for Bryce Harper, who finished with all four runs batted in. Our Chevrolet player of the game is Steven Strasburg. Ties his career high in strikeouts tonight, Matt. They did. We're going to see all of them here. Sweeney curveball. Then you see Herrera fastball. Buchanan got a curveball as well. Next to victim. Change up Sweeney. Herrera again with an elevated fastball. Whitey high fastball. Darren Ruff with the curveball. I think you're seeing all different kinds of pitches here, too. Yeah, you are. You're seeing different locations. Fastball. Chutes there with a the fastball. Low fastball. Another overpowering fastball. I mean, I can go on and on and on. But tonight he had eight punch outs on fastballs, three on curveball, three on changeup. Mm. Pretty much dominated the whole night. Found the strike zone. That's why he's a Chevrolet player of the game. 14 strikeouts for Strasburg. First time since 2010. Nationals win it four to nothing. We'll be back to wrap things up from Philadelphia right after this.